You're good to go. You're going. Yeah, we're going to ten ninety nine first. My Zoom is set up for lunch. Hello, everybody can you hear me? All right, so we're gonna get started. All right, so could, if everybody could sit down. So just remember, so we're having an issue with the live stream, but it is recording and we will re upload the, the recording to our YouTube channel. But just a reminder, just a reminder, um, we need to be clear on when you second something, who seconds it. So, and you gotta speak into the mic so it gets onto the recording. All right, so we can catch up with it. When we catch up our, our minutes, it will be on the, in the minutes properly versus us having to go back and figure out what's what. Okay, so see. Okay, everyone, we're gonna get started. Today is Thursday, June 27, 2024. This is the, the full board meeting of Bronx Community Board 11. My name is Veronica Castro. I'm the current acting chair of the community board. Um, may I ask, so, uh, who wants to read the code of conduct? Uh, yeah. I'm just gonna read it off of here. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Community board 11 meetings must be held in a professional and hostile free environment. The following rules of conduct are applicable to members of the public, Community Board 11, and Community Board 11 staff. Any action or behavior that disrupts or interferes with Community Board 11 business will not be tolerated during any Community Board 11 meeting and may result in the individual or individuals being asked to leave. If the action or behavior continues, this may be considered disturbing the peace and the appropriate authorities may be summoned. If the meeting is held remotely, the person may be muted or expelled for the remainder. Repeated violations by the same person or group of people may result in further action by the community board. All public speakers must address the full board or the committee with their concerns. Electioneering for a position other than an officer of community board 11 is prohibited. Engaging in acts of violence, including threats or grounds for immediate suspension of the right to attend meetings, pending review by the ethics and disciplinary committee. Respect the equality, diversity, and privacy of all persons by respecting and valuing differences of culture and opinion. 
refrain from unpleasant or disparaging remarks and other actions, abstain from all forms of harassment by actively discouraging it, disseminating false information is prohibited. Okay, at this time, um, where do we have the slide? Thank you. Okay, at this time, I'd ask everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, you can sit, Hazel. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, please remain standing. May we have a moment of silence for our fallen first responders and medical and military service personnel and for those su suffering throughout the world. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Okay, we're going to start with our gallery session. We're going to start with, do you want to start with those who registered? Okay, we're going to start with those who registered prior to the meeting. So we have Regional Operations Director Tamisha Prentice for DaVita Consolidation of Dialysis Facilities. Okay, Debbie, are you going to do the microphone? Yeah, she's right there. No, no, she, she'll come to you. Okay. Um, I just got to say yeah. So just a reminder, gallery session, everyone has two minutes to speak. Cynthia will be holding up the sign when 30 seconds is left on your time. So please pay attention over in this area so you're, <laughs> you know what's going on. Okay, you could come up to the middle to meet Debbie and she'll hold the microphone for you. Good evening, community board members. My name is Elizabeth Diaz. I'm here on behalf of DeVita Dialysis, an organization that provides kidney care across the United States. Uh, we have made the difficult decision to consolidate two of our Bronx facilities, Allerton and Bronx River. Uh, by the end of September in an effort to provide better care to the community. And so all of our patients, our staff, our physicians are aware, and they all have uh, places to treat. That is, of course, their choice to do so. We have been able to retain our, our entire staff um, and are, you know, just working through continuity of care at this time, but wanted to let the community know so that they were aware of the closure. Thank you so much. Can I ask what was the reason behind the needing to close it? Yeah, absolutely. So New York is a certificate of need state. And so of course, chairs, chairs are, are put as, as they're needed. Uh, DeVito acquired 67% of the chairs before COVID. With COVID, we have lost a large portion of our population to death. And uh, at this time, we just have a ton of centers uh, and capacity at other centers to be able to treat them and provide continuity of care with, with our teammates. Thank you for that. Does anyone else have any questions? Angel, uh, please speak into the microphone, which should be around this one. I got more. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Here you go. Where will the closest facility be now that you're closing these two? So where can the people that would usually be served at these facilities go? So we have several facilities throughout the Bronx uh, that will remain open. Our closest facility is, I believe, a mile and a half away. Um, super accessible to our patients, but they all have several options uh, and a list that they get to choose from, and they've all chosen where they want to go. Thank you. Thank Thanks you so much. I'm um, just rem just a little notice to the board members. We do have about 16 or 15 more people for gallery session, which means just alone in the speaking, it's going to be like half an hour. Usually we allow up to four questions. Would it be okay with the board if we limit that to two today? So that way we can get it moving. We have a full, a full agenda today. Okay. 
Thank you very much. Okay, next up, Mr. Ed Murphy, New York Greenway Road Widening. If he's online, I can't see who he is. Edward, maybe? I don't know. Just... So if somebody's online and your name is not clear, please rename yourself if you can. Otherwise, try to put something in the chat. Try to, I don't know, send us an email, something that we could try to check at some point. Figure out who's speaking, who needs to speak. And a reminder to the board members that have joined us virtually, please make sure you have your cameras on. Your cameras must be remain on throughout the whole meeting in order to be able to be considered um, present at the meeting tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to move on from Ed Murphy. Uh, Ed, wait, wait, wait. hold on. It is him. It is him. You got him then. Okay, so we're going to wait for Ed. Okay, Ed, you can try and talk now. Hi, can you hear me? Hello. Go ahead, Ed, you, we can hear you. Okay, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm here to, to speak again about the um, Pelham Parkway Greenway and totally against expanding it. You know, we, we lose so much green green space in the Bronx this is another example of, of, of losing more. I was through the park, I go through the greenway every day with my with my dog. And this this particular week, if I saw two cyclists, I'd be lying. There was only one runner, and these are from time from seven in, in the morning through nine o'clock in the morning, and also between 12 and one. I did see other joggers using the dirt path. So I, I'm i totally against, just like my neighbors, with expanding the um, the asphalt uh, part of the roadway there. You know, it's, it's a green way, not a paved way. That's all I have to say. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Ed. Okay, next we have Joan Marie Veltri, Friends of Pelham Parkway. Is she present or is she online? So also, if you're in the gallery and you didn't sign in, that would also be helpful. Um, I know people fill out slips here, but if you registered pre-advance, it's always helpful if you didn't sign in because it seems like there's a lot more people here than actually signed in. And we used, historically, we used... Um, when you sign in there to tell people, we get all the time, we want to, people ask us all the time, well, how many people are in attendance? When you actually sign in there, I can actually give them a better idea, just so you're aware. Okay, so um, Roxanne said that Jo Marie cannot be here, but she allotted her time to Charlene. Is anyone from the board objecting, objective to that? Okay, then Charlene, you have two minutes. With Charlene. Charlene Slade or somebody different? Yeah, yeah, right there. And the microphone. Debbie will hold the microphone. Hi. So I'm going to support um, my fellow community members that are friends of. Pelham Parkway, and we definitely want to say no to the expansion of the pathway or walkway. Um, even though it's, it's made to seem minimal, saying that you know you'll they'll just add two to three feet. If you look at that in total, it's more than uh, ten thousand feet of greenery that would be taken away from the park. Um, there's absolutely a need for people to be able to walk, 
and exercise on that parkway and be safe. And of course, expanding that pathway will just make it more accessible to electric scooters, um, which are really, really dangerous and resulting in injury, creating a problem. And there's also an issue with crime related to the use of those scooters. So that's a definite no. Also, there's a concern that widening the pathway would cause the removal of tree roots and endanger more mature trees and take away, again, more of the historic scenery that makes Pelham Parkway a standout in the Bronx. Um, and I think there will be over 20 mature trees removed along that pathway, which uh, there are questions about whether they are truly unhealthy or not. Okay, so we want the community board to represent us and not any other interest. So please strongly consider the fact that so many people have been coming from the actual community and asking that this not be done. It's not necessary. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shirley. Okay, next we have Charlene Slater, community member, neighbor, 30 years about parks widening of path to allow for motorized vehicle. And she's online. Okay, Charlene. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, perfect. Hi. So I am going to support what Charlene just said and what fr friends of Pelham Parkway and Ed are saying. I do not support the widening of the path because it does take away a lot of the greenery. And um, the number of trees that they mentioned that would be taken down due to, quote, disease is surprising because how do they know specifically these trees, which will probably be within the the foot that they add path, how do they know that those are disease trees? So that's questionable to me. Um, I, In my head, I think they want to widen the path for the motorized vehicles and motorized vehicles should not be anywhere where pedestrians are walking, where families are walking after dinner, where people are walking their pets and the elderly. I frequently walk the parkway, but I also walk our par park. And they said that they would include painted signage or painted uh, paint on the path. That doesn't work. I walk the park where the paths are painted for pedestrians and for bicycles, and it simply doesn't work. People don't follow rules anymore, so they're not going to follow the paint indicators. The last thing I wanted to address is that the Parks Department said that the there's a path worn on either side of the current path. That's why they want to widen the path. They indicated that because of the wearing of that area, people want more room to run, bike, and cycle. Um, but I will say that there are runners who run on the grass right next to the path because that's a preference. So these are a number of reasons why I think uh, the, the path doesn't need to be widened. Pedestrians hey, Charlene, have thank you. Your two minutes are up, but I thank you for sharing your concerns with us. Okay, you're welcome. Have a good night. Thank you, you too. Okay, next up we have Gloria Russo, Friends of Pelham Parkway. Okay, thank you for letting us know. Um, next, Nicholas Carol Volano, Street Parking and Road Conditions. Is Nicholas on Hi, when you are. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, Nicholas, go right ahead. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, my family and I have a home in the Van Ness section of the Bronx, um, and in our home is adjacent to um, Van Ness and Matthews Avenue, where there's a dead end uh, that's kind of become subjected more recently to um, double, triple parking. Um, and it, it became more apparent, I would say, within the last month when um, I and other people in the neighborhood weren't able to exit out one morning. I was trying to go and get medication uh, for a family member, and I was unable to exit for about two hours. Um, what I was trying to see would be, would it be possible to consider or bring to light possibly painting 
uh, some sort of restriction um, line to say this is where, you know, the the parking would be. There's no sidewalk there. And so somebody I know in the past had said, and there's no sidewalk. So that's why the street is so wide. I don't know if the sidewalk would be uh, some sort of reprieve either, but this, um, you know, the double and the triple parking is becoming very unsustainable. Um, in addition to that, the street was repaved um, adjacent to our home as well. There's a broken curb. Uh, the DOT had said that they would add that to their list in the next three to five years, but uh, the curb is pretty damaged and it can cut car tires. Uh, in addition to that, if we've noticed that there's been an uptick in uh, speeding vehicles, also driving against the flow of traffic. And um, we're trying to see, you know, also other people in the neighborhood, if a stoplight, a speeding camera, a speed reducer uh, could be considered to stop the speeding, but also driving down the wrong way of traffic. Uh, and also there are only two crosswalks. Uh, there's, we we're wondering if there could be two more to connect pedestrian traffic on the other end, for the elderly, the children, we have two schools within a quarter mile of that location and there's disabled I'm, people. Thank you, Nicholas, for sharing your concerns with us. We will get back to you on, on some of the um, items that you asked about. So just be sure to uh, have, he left his uh, email address, right? I, I got his okay. So we, we will re, uh, get back to you with some answers to your questions, okay? Thank you. Uh, next up, Director of Landscape Architecture, Renata Sokolowski, Bronx Parks Department. So Renata, I keep trying to promote you to a panelist because this is how we're doing this tonight. So please accept the um, invite. That's how you're allowed to speak tonight. Okay, good. Okay, Renata, whenever you're ready. Are you ready? Yes, I am. You may begin. Uh, yes, good evening, everybody. My name is Renata Sokolowski. I'm the design director for capital projects for the Bronx uh, Borough. And uh, I just wanted to let you know that it took uh, quite a long time before we have uh, uh, communicated with the community and the community board uh, to uh, finalize the scope of work for this project. Uh, initially, it was a different scope of work and we listened to the original concerns. We changed the scope, then we came back. And then again, you know, we were told that the priority is to um, reconstruct the entire length of the bikeway as well, I'm, I'm sorry, the greenway, as well as uh, uh, the reconstruction of uh, uh, one of the plazas at the Samer Avenue, as well as the installation of the four drinking fountains. Uh, the reason that uh, we're looking at this greenway in a way that uh, has to be formalized is because this is a mark, uh, mapped a greenway within the greenway um, a map for the New York City, and it's a very important connector between the Bronx Park and the Pelham Parkway. Uh, Pelham Parkway. And uh, in order to actually make it at the minimum uh, conforming to the standards, uh, the path would have to be between eight and 10 feet. And recently we have actually went to the site and we have observed a tremendous traffic between you know, the children and the pedestrians and the um, uh, motorized, let's say, uh, you know, users of the, pathway, which uh, includes uh, the bikers and, of course, the e-bikes. I think it's inevitable that, you know, these uh, motorized, uh, uh, you know, users are going to use this path, and we just want to make it as safe as possible, and we believe that widening this by a foot or two Time. would actually be good, would be safe. Um, we are going to implement... Yes. I am sorry, you're two minutes up, but one of our board members has a question for you. Just a Thank moment. You. Renata, as the um, Director of Landscape and Architecture, what can you tell us about the tree protection plan for this project? 
Yes, of course. A parks department has a very strict policy on uh, protecting the trees during construction. And uh, we have uh, engaged with the parks po forestry, as well as the landscape uh, construction unit, as well as with the arborist from our consultant. So three different entities were working on the assessment of over 600 trees along the uh, greenway and we made sure that uh, you know each tree was assessed as to the health and the condition the structural condition of each single tree it took about three months actually to do this survey and uh, the method of um, assessing you know if the tree is healthy or actually will pose any danger in the future of losing limbs due to high winds uh, or you know falling actually down uh, you know forestry has uh, you know they have a certified arborist on board and they know how to test it they use different methods I can't speak to it right now but they have uh, you know uh, observations they also do some testing they use Use the sound, uh, uh, you know, of uh, reasoning, would say, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, that's how they assess all the trees. They also look into the history, you know, of the tree. They have a, a way to I'm, I'm assess sorry, Renata, the age of the tree. I don't want to cut you off there. Um, thank you so much. I, and I understand that um, you said that there is another team that has done these assessments. Um, and I appreciate you going at length uh, to detail the procedures and what they use to do that. Um, given that they put all that work in there, um, I'm guessing that assessment, right, um, was able to be used by your team to produce an actual tree protection plan. The document's already ready. Um, you guys have already like developed that. Is that something that you can share with the board? No, this is being developed at the later time when we are actually developing the contract document, the drawings. That's when we actually doing the tree protection. This is to protect the trees during the construction. And the methods vary from installing the tree guards or the tree um, uh, you know, uh, growth guards and uh, also installing extra uh, mulch uh, and the plywood or rubber, uh, uh, you know, protection, you know, so if there is any vehicle that has to drive nearby any tree, they have a warning from the tree guard with the orange fence not to encroach nearby. And also the wheels are driving over mulch or the plywood with uh, rubber mats. Okay, so thank you for that. Um, I'm sorry, I, I, I know, but the, the, a lot of members of the community had made Oh, okay. Um, <sighs> so can we just take Ken and then move on? Ken, uh, you have your hand up. You could go ahead and ask your question. Ms. Arkelos, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay. I was muted before. Um, you said before that it's inevitable that these go are going to, that these electric vehicles will use this path you currently are not enforcing their, let me go back. Why aren't you enforcing the current rules which, which prohibit them? Since if you were to do that, it would discourage them also from using it in the future. I can't really answer that question, sir. I just think that, you know, the overall culture in the city is that uh, the e-bikes are, uh, you know, being used widely. And uh, I, I believe that, you know, widening the path is just going to make uh, the path safer and, uh, you know, more amenable, you know, for the use of uh, various different users. Um, in terms of discouraging, I don't know how we can discourage people from using the e-bikes on the sidewalks in the city or on the streets in the city, you know, or, you know, anywhere else. And as you all know, and uh, we actually took a video, um, there are, you know, these uh, uh, desire areas, you know, sometimes where uh, people on bikes or other uh, instruments that they ride, you know, actually have to get off the path in order to make a space for the pedestrians. Uh, so that already kind of sends a message that there is a need uh, for a better and a safer way to 
enjoy uh, the walkway and the riding, you know, through this greenway. Thank you, Renata. I know that a couple of our of other of our board members have questions. I'll ask the board members since we limited to two questions per person speaking. If you could send your questions to Jeremy and the staff, and then he can forward it to Renata, and we could get the answers then. Okay. Thank you. For those of you who have a smartphone, just send me an email right now, and I can send it, or I could just share. I mean, I think that's probably the best way. I can share, or I could just share Renata's email with you. Okay, next up we have Cheryl Murray Powell Esquire, New York, the dispensary opening update. Uh, Cheryl, are you around? Okay, we'll circle back to Cheryl. Uh, Eileen Marcus, resident, Pelham Parkway renovations. Eileen, are you on? Hello. Hi, uh, Eileen, you have two minutes, and Cynthia will let you know when you have 30 seconds left. Thank you for letting me speak. Um, okay, so I, I missed a little bit of the first part, but um, I'm against removing trees to accommodate a water pathway. Um, uh, I think trees are the biggest attraction of Pelham Parkway, and um, they're, they're beautiful, and um, they create a lot of shade, and um, and um, and I'm I'm against the widening of the pathway um, because it it will attract more e-scooters and motorbikes, and um and I think I and even if there's a line, I don't believe the riders will, will follow the rules. Um, they, as I see what they do, they speed, and sometimes there's two on a, on a e-scooter, um, and the motorcyclists speed, and I'm not comfortable walking down the pathway um, with, with motorbikes next to me and e-scooters, um, and um and i don't think there's a a way to enforce any rules for these these people that are biking um i Very i seconds. feel oh um i i feel unsafe um they're they're um they're um they're on the they're on the uh, streets and go through the through the parkway where there are benches and um, and I think it'll just make more of a problem having them on the pathway. I, I like to have the pathway um, and um, and the, the, okay, the bicycles. I don't mind. It's fine, You're but it's, up, I, don't, I, I prefer they don't add the. Uh, the Okay, Eileen, thank you so much. We appreciate you bringing your concerns to the board. Um, up next, we have Ronnie Colangelo for 1900 Seminole. Just a reminder, Debbie will be holding on to the microphone. <laughs> oh, don't touch the mic. Well, anyway, I went to the... Uh, New York City Health and Hospital meeting at Lincoln, Center, uh, Lincoln Hospital the other day. I spoke. They give you five minutes there, I guess. We can't do that here. So as I tore into them, the CEO of Jacoby, who was very friendly at the beginning, wasn't friendly at the end. You can see my speech at the 1900 Seminole on Facebook. So I went to the CAB meeting two weeks ago over at Jacoby. He refused to let me speak. And as we went back and forth, back and forth, I figured, let's like I dragged out the cuffs. So as he adjourned the meeting, your ex-Vice President Al D'Angelo went over and gave him a little neck massage and said, don't worry, they can't stop the project. Which, of course, I figured, since he never put anything about 1900 up in the Modest Park Community Association or came to any meetings or gatherings or anything, and uh, the first person that was supposed to speak at Lincoln Hospital was Christy Marmorado, and she was a no-show. But she can show up for the doctors on Pelham Parkway and say, oh, I'm a health worker and a mother. And, but she never showed up to any meetings. 
for the Morris Park 1900. And now we hear, like the uh, city of Yes, it's in the hands of the city council. And how did that go? So again, we've done little to nothing to stop this project. And the Fortune Society has a new cross to bear. It's called Nowhere to Go. They're, they're upset that, you know, sex offenders have limitations on where they can live and where they can go. So are we going to allow them in 1900, since this is their new plan? So I don't know what we're going to do, but it doesn't seem like it's going too well for our side. So that's all I got to say, and I won't touch the mic. Who knows where my hands have been? Thank you, Ronnie. <laughs> OK, up next, we have Robert Press regarding the city of Yes. Thank you. Uh, it appears that the board will be hearing a recommendation on the city of Yes for housing opportunity. Uh, the, as a member of the committee, uh, you will be getting a recommendation to say no to the city of Yes housing opportunity. And I believe the chair of the committee has a resolution that was given to her by me. Uh, hopefully she will read it or change it as to uh, however she feels needed. But in reading and I'm going to digress a little to another subject. In reading the agenda tonight, I see there's an election. However, there's only one name on here, Harry Santella. And it says election for chair. So who's running for chair? Vice chair. What's the name of the people running for vice chair? And I don't know who dropped out of the secretary position. I know it sounds like an Abbott and Costello routine, uh, but you also are going to have now nominations for this Sergeant of Arms tonight, so Harry will not be the only person, or may not be the only person, I should say. Uh, also, let me just read from the city charter, okay, because of term limits, it was recently revised. One half of the members appointed to the community board shall serve for a term of two years, beginning from the first day of April in each odd-numbered year, and then in each even-numbered year. Now, April 1st passed, and this board does not have the new members it's supposed to have. Uh, and they would be voting tonight. So I would suggest, uh, because there is no names listed in here, as far as who's running for what position, and as far as you not having your new members on the board, that this board move the election till September. It can be done. It has been done on other community boards. And if the borough president's representative is here, I don't know if he's here, Kenny, or not, uh, he would tell you that, yes, it can be done. And I would suggest that this board vote to move the election till September. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Just for clarification, the nominations for chair, vice chair, and secretary were closed in May, so there are no new ones. The reason why we have Harry listed is because the nominations for um, Sergeant at Arms are still open, so people are aware of who's already been nominated. As for moving it to September, our bylaws state that when there's a vacancy of a seat, which there was in May, we have to have a nominations and elections within the next two meetings. That second meeting would be today. Well, uh, I've asked the district manager, I sent them emails, ask him who is withdrawn and who are the candidates, where were the statements? And I've asked for the statements by the candidates and I haven't gotten them. Okay, I will be, if you do have an election tonight, I will be appealing this. Okay, thank you, Bob. Hmm? Next up, we have Roxanne Delgado, Friends of Pelham Parkway, regarding Pelham Parkway. Evening, Community Board 11. I just want to show that I have a letter from all the community groups in City Council District 13. And just last night, um, Mr. Oscar Grant for NYCHA, Pelham Parkway House, has signed on to this letter. I have the test confirming that he signed on. He was about he was supposed to be here. Unfortunately, he could not make it. I like to state that I did give you two handouts, one for the Riverdale Press. The Pundit Trail is a Nightmare, written by Ms. Dolan, a, ten year, a, a retired teacher and 10-year 10 10 nature tour guide, who said that after they installed that 10 feet wide asphalt pathway, that they had lots of conflicts with Ill illegal and electrical motorized vehicles that had endangered and taken away the enjoyment from, from pedestrians like herself, nature lovers. And then in response to her letter, which says that uh, you sow what you reap, a letter written in response by the park manager stated that because they compromised instead of 12 feet, what was initially proposed, but 10 feet, that because 10 feet is too small, that's why the conflict um, exists, which I disagree. But none of the case both say that there's an 
uh, lots of conflict in the existing 10 feet wide pathway, which is why I'm saying that regardless how wide they made this pathway, we'll still have the existing conflict between pedestrians and motorized or electric vehicles. Because would you like to walk alongside the roads or street where the cars are driving by, even though you may have room enough to walk? Of course not, you'll feel unsafe. How do you think pedestrians will feel walking on the pathway while electrical and motorized vehicles are riding by alongside them? Uh, who will monitor the speed? There's no, there's no traffic control, there's no signaling. It, this is a recipe for disaster. So I'm asking you to please listen to the community. Time and time again, we have members and members and members for the past year who came to these meetings, who ask you why they were not in support widening the pathway, environmental issue. We're gonna lose over 10,000 feet of green space. That means 10,000 feet of asphalt, which will only heat the pathway because two feet wide times a whole mile is 10,000 feet. That means more heat, not to mention that we need the grass to absorb all the flooding. We're getting record high of rain. If we need, we need more greenery. And this is why, I, and the trees. What's funny is that last night, due to the rains and winds, there were trees that fell, okay, but the Roxanne. trees that they want to remove are intact. Thank you so much. You're two minutes up, but if you please stay there. One yes, from our board has a question. So, um, can you, you can hear me? Yeah, now. So I think I just heard Ms. Solosky said say that there's some kind of law or regulation that requires the pathway to be um, widened eight to eight, eight to 10 feet. Is that, do you, um, you know that? Is that true as far as you know? Yes, I can answer your question. Okay. Thank you for your question. In the, P, in the park Q and A that they sent to you two days ago, they actually say that the regulation requires 12 feet, by the way. And that regulation is not for parks, it's for roads. And it's, if I look at the city chart for park regulation, nowhere does it say specify the width of a walkway or pathway. Mm -hmm. This is a DOT procedure because they want to put what they can address on the roads, they want to bring it to a park. And that's not fair. We have bike lanes everywhere throughout the city. Let them use the bike lane. Why take away the enjoyment from park goers? Here's the second question just because Ed did it. So I want to do it Let now. Let me just make sure that <laughs> nobody else has a question. Does anybody else have a question for Roxanne? Okay, then you can use What that. What is the, when you say that they're trying to, correct something, you know, that they're trying to correct something through this parkway that they haven't been able to do with the roads. What are you referring to? Because there's a lot of fatalities on the roads, not only for pedestrians. Also are you referring to people using e-bikes and they're trying to move the e-bikes into the parkway? Is that what you're saying? No, ideally they want to move cyclists into the parkway. Got it. But unfortunately okay. they can uh, regulate it. It's being used illegally by e-bikes, uh, e mopeds, ATV. It's daily and it's been happening on Pundit Trail. And they, there's no way on force it. We were at the 49 precinct two days ago, and they said the new captain said there's no way on force in the e-share program. And the only way they can do it is by summoning park illegal vehicles, but they can't do it while they're in motion. And there's no way to monitor the speed. And the speed is the speed on Palm Parkway is 25 and less on the roads. But we have people riding on the greenway over 25 miles per hour, faster than they're riding on the road. Please, there's children involved in this. Okay, thank you so much, Roxanne. Thank you for the information you provided to us. And thank you, you for bringing concerns. Yeah, I got, I have, give me one. Thank you. I, I got yeah, thank you. Okay, next up, we have, oops, sorry, I have Roxanne there. Janet Gerens from Pelham Parkway or regarding Pelham Parkway. Hey, Janet Gerens. Um, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Janet Herena. I live in Pelham Parkway for quite some time now. Um, I'm just going to try to be as brief as possible. Um, I don't understand why we are being um, imposed a motorized culture. When last I remember um, having a parkway where you have a trail where you can walk, and talk to your neighbors, talk to members of the community that perhaps you have never met before. And, you know, not only nourish relationships that you already have, but make new ones, make new friends, you know, and, and new family. Why is it that they continuously want to take this away from us? The trail to walk, it's fine. Go to Jacoby any given day at emergency, and what you're gonna find is people hurt from the e-bikes. Not that they just fall, but that they cause also harm to pedestrians. We have invested all this money in making lines, um, lanes, and so, I'm sorry, for the bikes. Mind you, they not being used, but they wanted ride on the park. Where are we gonna walk? 
where are we going to walk? I mean, when somebody's going to take a step and protect pedestrians for once and for all? Doesn't make any sense. You go over there, go to the parkway right now at this time, and what you're going to find is families and people walk in the parkway. No, that's not going to be happening if they go along with this project. It's not going to happen. It's going to be a speedway. That's what it's going to create, a speedway. Thank you. Thank you, Janet, and my apologies for misreading your last name. <laughs> okay, we have Kevin Dewalla, Hutchison River Greenway, speaking on daylighting and parks, parks mall project. Thank you very much. I'm going to change the subject for a minute first and speak about the daylighting transportation committee. Uh, Ryan, thank you very much for bringing that subject up and for the committee for uh, passing the resolution. I hope the uh, full board has studied that and understands that it's a major safety measure, uh, clearing the intersections and crosswalks of vehicles, blocking full view while making turns it can only lead to better visibility when turning a corner. Um, if you remember, there was a crash with a young lady on Rhinelander two years back, just a similar situation. Perhaps if there was some daylighting there prior to the light being there and all of that, you know, something could have been saved. So just keep that in mind. And then, of course, uh, I want to give a little information or speak a little bit about the uh, uh, minority of people here that are very vocal about um, not wanting to expand the safety measures on Helen Parkway. I believe most of them spoke about safety issues speeding bikes, speeding scooters, and I don't see any policemen here to help answer those questions. Also legislation to keep them, you know, safe, slower, um, off the area if that's what's necessary. And I really don't know if any of the elected officials will speak about that tonight. Um, a couple of things that came up were answered by Renata. I hope you understood that number of trees, the amount of uh, land being taken up. Um, has anybody ever walked on the Bronx River Greenway? Anybody ever walked on the Hutchins River Greenway? Anybody ever walked on the Harlem River Greenway with bikes going by you in the opposite direction? Wouldn't that be nice on Pelham Parkway? I don't remember anybody petitioning positive or negative. That would have been nice for us to get that kind of information because although we have the uh, vocal minority, um, we're not really getting the number of people that actually use the Greenway at any intersection, White Plains Road, East Chester, Williamsbridge Road. That would be nice. It is called the Moshulu Pelham Greenway. It's part of the New York City Greenway system. I'm part of a lot of groups, the New York uh, City Greenway Coalition, the Hutchinson River Parkway, uh, Hutchinson River Greenway uh, team, we do cleanups. And uh, I'm just gonna go, I'm losing my little voice here. Um, listen, when I ride my bike time, I think I Thank you, Kevin. Okay, next up we have Roy Smith uh, speaking on the Pelham Greenway. Coming up behind you. Hi, uh, my name is, sorry, wrong glasses. <laughs> my name is Roy Smith. I live on City Island. I'm speaking this evening as a private citizen and a frequent user of the Pelham Parkway Greenway. So there's two sayings that I'm sure you've heard. One is think globally, act locally, and the other is not in my backyard. This evening, I'm asking the board to think, if not globally, then at least a little outside their backyard. When I addressed this group last October, I pointed out that the Pelham Greenway is part of a 3,000 mile East Coast Greenway, of which 11 miles are in the Bronx, and Community Board 11 is steward to two miles along the Pelham Parkway. When I listen to people's experiences on the Greenway, I don't want to hear that part through the Bronx sucked. What I want to hear is I was pleasantly surprised at how beautiful the part through the Bronx is, and the people here tonight have the power to make that happen. We've all experienced the problems with the Greenway. There's so many people on it, there's not enough room for everybody pedestrian cyclists, the elderly or infirm using wheelchairs or walkers, kids, people pushing babies and strollers and so on. Everybody loses when cyclists pass pedestrians at unsafe distances because there's no place else to go. Everybody loses when the path is so narrow that people are forced off the, forced off the edges into the grass. And the park loses too because the grass gets destroyed. If making the path a few feet wider makes room, enough room for everybody, we all win. I encourage Community Board 11 to support the Parks Department plan to both resurface and widen the Pelham Parkway Greenway. Thank you for allowing me the time to speak this evening. Um, if you like, I can leave a copy for your record. That would be great. Thank you so much, Roy. Next up, Diana Finch, Pelham Parkway Greenway. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Ready? 
Tonight, the board will have newly elected officers. By the end of the summer, it'll have its new members sworn in. I hope this board will also have a new approach. Work first to identify the concerns of all its residents. Then work together to find the best solutions. I hope we'll stop seeing issues as us versus them battles. No more homeowners versus unhoused people, lifetime residents versus newcomers, Helen Parkway versus Bronx Park East, bike riders versus pedestrians. In the end, we all want the same things, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Today, I posted a seven second video to Facebook of the overcrowded parkway on a warm summer evening. Two kids on push scooters weaving to the left through a group of pedestrians walking three and four abreast, a cyclist riding out to the right onto the grass to avoid a father and daughter holding hands. My friend Elizabeth, who leads Friends of Mashaloo Parkway, our sister Greenway, commented, we had this issue. She said that the more asphalt was laid to widen the sidewalk, the longer vision was to protect surrounding nature by providing the accessible path to prevent the landscape from becoming trampled and eroded. Residents are rightly concerned that motorbikes and fast e-bikes will use a smooth repaved path and they'll try whether it's eight feet or the minimum New York State DOT safety standard, 10 feet. So let's work with parks to address this head on, especially at the crossover seating areas at Wallace and Bronxwood. Let's brainstorm real solutions, enforcement, signs, soft bollards, more public education, what else? The handlebars of my small bike are just over two feet. I feel comfortable riding with at least a foot on either side. Two adults walking together Take up at least four feet, unless- Diane, I'm sorry, that's your time's up. Feet. Time's up, thank you. Okay, that's all we have that signed up for gallery. I do encourage everyone who's sitting here today to let your other community members know that we have committee meetings. You're welcome to, jo to come to our committee meetings to voice any concerns you have. If you're unable to come to the meetings, you can always email the um, staff at our community board office with any of your concerns and we will address them. So thank you very much. That closes the gallery session. Uh, next up is the chair's report. Ryan, I'm sorry, go ahead, Ryan. I was gonna ask if Diana was able to fit, would have an, could have another moment to finish her, what she was saying. Um, I'll leave that up to the board. All those in favor of giving her extra time? Okay, I'm sorry, the, the majority of the board is not in favor of it, but thank you, Ryan, for the suggestion. Okay, so moving on to the chair's report, there's one thing that I wanted to bring up. In the last two months that I've been acting chair, I have tried to join as many committee meetings as possible. And I knew there was a problem before, but it's become even more glaring as I sit in these meetings and see that we don't have quorum in a lot of these meetings. We have to fix that. We're here to be able to make motions, to make decisions. If we don't have a quorum sitting in these committee meetings, we're not able to function. We basically are not able to do what it is we're supposed to be doing. And I said this before, and I know a lot of people are not a fan of this, remote. Remote is only for special circumstances and you have to divulge that to the DM, why you cannot come. Now. I know being remote is easy and for a lot of people, it's the best way for them to go. But when you are remote, if you do not have a, um, a, a special circumstance to do so, you cannot be counted as quorum, which means that we are now left with no quorums for our committee meetings. So again, I'm just asking, no matter what the results of the election tonight, please think about what committees you're on. You're on what committees you feel that maybe you'd be better dropping so that you could pay full, more full attention to the committees that you are able to attend to. So that way, when we get the new board members on, we can fit them into spaces that they would like and that would be beneficial for the board. And hopefully going forward, we'll have quorum for these committee meetings. As of tonight, we have, I think, three committees that were not able to vote on the motions that now have to come to the full board. So that's not the way it's supposed to be. But unfortunately, that's what we have to do tonight. So again, I urge everyone on the board, please rethink 
what committees you're on, rethink why you're being remote. If it's something that should be, that is something that you cannot change. If you can't come to a, a couple of meetings out of the month, rethink it. Think how we can help you. Come to the DM, come to whoever the chair is at the time. We can work with you. We can talk with you, try and figure something out. So that's all I have to say from my report. So I thank you all. I just want to clarify that. So um, ideally, actually, you notify the chair of your committee. Ideally, you send an email and you CC staff. Because if there's a question of whether your attendance is excused or not, I ultimately, if I'm not sure about it, I mean, usually, but also, if you're the chair of a committee, please fill out that form. If you don't know, put, put absent. Put absent. That's what I do on my spreadsheet. But if I don't know, I will go back to the chair of the committee or the board if it's a question mark. And I've also asked the staff, and hopefully it will continue um, no matter what the results are, to put together all the absentees, the attendance records for all the committees and all the full boards. Because in our bylaws, there is, and I don't know the exact verbiage out of the top of my head, but we are supposed to be reviewing absenteeism and attendance regularly. And if people do not fall within the required amount of um, meetings and so forth, we're supposed to bring that to their attention and as full board um, address it. So I believe it's very important that we start doing that again. So thank you again. And, I, and some of you know I've spoken to you. If you're on too many committees, consider taking yourself off. I've spoken to, you, to some of you about this. I even spoke to one member today about that. And next up, Treasurer's Report. That's also me. And as always, I have submitted to Treasurer's Report. The staff has it. They will um, upload it to the website as soon as they can. Thank you. And I have asked that the past uh, Treasurer's Report please be uploaded also. Next, we have uh, Secretary's Report. Hi, um, the staff and I would like to apologize. Um, we are, we don't have any minutes for February, March, April, or May at this time. Um, we're trying to put everything together. So hopefully we'll have everything that's missing in September. Thank you. Thank you, Hazel. Now district manager's report, Jeremy. Uh, so Yankee Awards and ga game tickets. So there was a game. Board members are not, not allowed to take tickets or family members of board members. As you know, we have a game coming up in August. They are going to try to do something for our Yankee Award nominees. Typically what they do, like they had at the past game, is they do an on-the-field ceremony. Um, we had a, a limited amount of tickets, but according to one of the award recipient, recipients' parents, not a lot of people came to that game. I can't figure out who exactly didn't come. Um, but for the August game, so anybody wants to request tickets, I do already have a QU. My guess is <laughs> the tickets are going to go because I only have 50 tickets. 25 have to go to Yankee awardees. Um, but I will try, I'm going to try to figure out which tickets are not going to be used. Um, I've already reached out to the Yankees about that. They've not been helpful in the past in that regard, but whatever. Uh, three inactive non-standing committees. Um, so somebody at this came up with leadership. We have bylaws, social media, the DEI committee. So if you're a member of that committee, I highly encourage you to speak to your fellow committee members. And I know one of them doesn't have a chair right now, I believe. Um, but yeah, consider, you know, we the point of a non-standing committee is to have a meeting or disband. Uh, text message notifications. Everybody got the text message notification. I think it went out yesterday. Okay, great. So I did a test sometime before that. Um, currently, the way we set that up, we're limited to 320 characters without having to pay extra for our, the current plan that we pay for the robocalls. So we'll hopefully continue that with, um, it seems like pretty successful so far. I feel like more people actually read, look at that text message than they listen to the robocalls. So thank you for that. Uh, unless there's anything else, let's, I'll, I'll keep it towards the end of the meeting, ideally. I just have a question. Everybody got the robo or the text message. Is there anyone that had any issues with the text messages that we should be aware of? And if you prefer robocalls on your home phone, generally speaking, you're not going to get, you got to tell us what cell phone number you want the text message to. All right. Okay. Go ahead, Lisa. Is there a microphone buddy? Um, just a quick question. Um, now that we're getting text messages, are we going to get both the robocalls and the text messages? Or can we opt out of the robocalls now? You can opt out of the robocalls regardless of text messaging. Okay. Can, you, some people 
a long time ago they didn't want robocalls. Oh, okay. All so right. yeah, Thanks. at any point. Okay. Oh, wait, sorry, second question. I lied ahead, two questions. Um, uh, what were the three committees that you said? You said it really fast. The three non standing committees. So by bylaws, um, bylaws, social media, and DEI. Okay, thanks. Question. Um, are we voting on this? What we're so, doing in terms of text messages, robocalls? This is just something that we do for uh, for the staff that the staff does. We can, if you if you want to, if you want to have a vote on it, that's fine. You can make a motion. Be consistent with certain new things. Um, I would like to make a motion to use um, text messages and robocalls to contact the community board members for meetings. Okay, do we have a second? Second it by Rich Reynoso. Okay, any discussion? Okay, because there are people online, I'm going to ask if there are any objections. Any abstentions? Okay. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Naomi. And robocalls. But again, they, with the caveat, they can opt out if you want, each individual member. Okay. Okay. So that's the end of the reports for that. We're moving on to committee reports. First up is the nominating and elections committee. I'll hand it over to Joanne. Hi, everybody. I hope you can hear me because I hate this thing. Yeah. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, all right, good evening. Uh, tonight we'll be selecting our, electing our officers, our chair, our vice chair, our secretary, and sergeant at arms. Um, for the chair, vice chair, and secretary, we, it will go from July 1st to June 30, 2025. For the sergeant at arms, it's going to go from June 27th to June 30, 2025. Okay. Um, but first, we have to take nominations for our sergeant at arms position as nominations for that position has not been closed due to an unexpected vacancy. Uh, please note that all other nominations for chair, vice chair, and secretary are officially closed, so no other nominations will be accepted for those positions. So right now, I'm going to, right now we have one nomination for sergeant at arms, and that's Harry Santella. Uh, and I want to know if there are any other nominations for sergeant at arms. Okay. So Shrano Purdom is nominating Debbie Kowalik. Debbie, do you accept? We need to second. I'll second it. I mean, I apologize. Second it by Rich Reynoso. Okay, Debbie, do you accept? I accept. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you. Are there any other nominations for Sergeant at Arms at this time at this point? going once, going twice. Okay, nominations are now officially closed. Okay, all right. Now I'm gonna explain a bit about the ballot. Uh, Jeremy, please chime in if you need to. Um, because some individuals did not submit their candidate statements uh, in time with the 72 hours before the election in order to secure their name on the ballot, uh, this is according to our bylaws. If we do not follow our bylaws, anyone elected tonight could be challenged. So, um, however, this does not mean they cannot run. Their names can be written on the ballot tonight. So it really shouldn't make a difference if you know who you're gonna vote for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tell you who is running and please make a note of the person who, who you wanna vote for if they're not gonna be on the ballot, okay? So for chair, it's gonna be Veronica Castro, Naomi Pemberton, and Cynthia Rodriguez. For vice chair, it's Edward Perez and Richard Reynoso. For secretary, it's Hazel Mura. For sergeant at arms, now it's Debbie Kowalik and Harry Santella. So please um, make a note of that because you're going to write their names in of the people that you, you don't see their names on the ballot. Okay, so please make a note of that. Okay, so uh, you're going to be receiving. Um, you're gonna be receiving a ballot, I think, I don't know when, Jeremy, by email, I don't know when. Just, just tell me when to click send. Everyone, like my question, microphone, please, microphone. Oh. Jeremy, we have to find out if everyone here has 
an iPhone or an iPad to do the voting. Or, or, or you have it, or do we have regular paper? No, that, regular phone. No, no. We, or the, reg, do you have, a, you have your phone now? The ballots are electronic. They're done here. And we make the announce, we announce everything is done publicly and the results are later shared publicly, which is also in accordance with the bylaws. Okay. Are there so anybody has an issue with technology, just let me know, I'll come over um, or whoever's next to you. Usually like one of you will use, it doesn't matter. You can't vote more than once, right? right? So if you vote more than once, I'm gonna strike, I'm gonna have to ask you which one's valid or whatever, or if they're okay. the same, I'm just striking one. Okay, and make we'll, sure- I'll oh, confer obviously with you okay. and Sandy. Once I get the results, I'll come over right. to you. We'll go off to the corner. Right. We'll look at the results. Also make sure you put your legal name down, or put your full name, don't put a first name or just a last name because that will affect your results. And if, okay. you're writing, if you're writing somebody and you don't know how to spell their name, please let me know ASAP. I think Naomi has a question. Um, I have a statement. I'm going to withdraw from chair. Okay. I All right. To draw. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I thank you. you for nominating me. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. There, if there are any questions, please uh, direct them to myself or to Jeremy. Okay. Thank you so much. And good luck, everybody. Okay. It was sent. So, do you want to move on to leadership? Yeah. Okay, so we're moving on to the leadership committee report. We have a motion that Community Board 11 recommend disapproval of the Elton Food Festival Street Activity Permit for July 27, 2024. Is the rabbi here? Yes. Oh, there you are. <laughs> By the coffee. Um, do you want to speak on why it was um, why the determination was made, or do you want Hazel to? Okay. Um, hi, I'll be very very brief. Um, the application was put in as a recurring event. Unfortunately, the person that put in the application did not have this event ever. It was the first time. So the city um, told us that because of that. Um, the um, application is null and void. So we could not approve it. Does everybody understand that? Do you have any questions? Okay, thank you. Uh oh, God, I can't even see. Okay, okay. sorry. <laughs> okay. So this was a mo motion to leadership, so we don't need a second. Is there any other discussion on it? Okay, any objections to it? I know everyone's busy voting, but I just wanna make sure everyone's hearing the motion and reacting to it. So it's motion that Community Board 11 recommend disapproval of the Allerton Food Festival Street Activity Permit for July 27th, 2024. So I'll repeat, any objections? So we have an objection from Naomi Pemberton, an objection from Ed Perez, an objection from Lisa Soto, an objection from Angel Diaz. Any others? Let me just check online. And Susan Perez. So we have Naomi, Ed, Angel, um, Lisa, and Susan Perez. Okay, any abstentions? We have an abstention from Kadian. Any abstentions online? Okay, motion passes with five objections and one abstention. Okay, moving on to, wait, 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 wait. go ahead. You said five objections? Yeah, we have Naomi, Lisa. Angel, Lisa, Lisa, Ed, and Susan. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Ed. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna move on to ethics and disciplinary. I'll hand it over to Naomi. <laughs> I'm on the stage. Okay. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, as you know, for about a couple of months, I've been announcing that um, Grassroots wanted to work with us in terms of packing food for our community. And I wanted to make a motion for us to partner with Grassroots for June 29th and August 3rd. 
Um, I'm, I'm hoping that everyone will come and participate. I feel that we as a board um, have gone through a lot and I think it's a good way to bond and work with each other and, do, and, make, and have service for the community and show the community that we care. So I'm hoping that you will pass my motion and I also hope that you come out. I'm gonna have some food. <laughs> I'm gonna have some breakfast food. So please come out, support the community, support District, um, District 11. If you're also able to drive food to some of the people that need um, to have it delivered, I'd really appreciate that as well. If you're looking for the link, I can also provide that to you to sign up. Thank you and um, I hope you um, pass our motion. Made by Naomi, seconded by Cynthia. Just for clarification, I think that the grassroots um, project is a great one and I myself plan on signing up for the August one. But the, the motion basically is just to, so that it could be considered a community board 11 event. So I, since it's being labeled as a community board 11 event, I wanna make sure that the full board is in, a, in agreement that it can be. Otherwise, even if this motion doesn't pass for whatever reason, I still encourage everyone to try and sign up for one of the dates because it is a great event. I've done it with my job and it's very, very good. It, I mean, it's actually really gets people together. So even if it doesn't pass, I still encourage some, everyone to try and sign up for at least one of the dates. Okay, so you're welcome. Naomi, if you wanna continue with the motion. Okay, I made the motion already. Okay. So um, any abstentions? Oh, any discussion? Oh, about the voting, you could go to Jeremy. Since I'm one of the nominees, I'm going to step out of helping people. But you could go to. Oh. Well, I got a question. Um, since I was nominated for Sergeant of Arms last month, and my name wasn't on the ballot, it was. I, it was just my name was taken off. But. 72 hours to submit the statement. But the nominee committee never sent me an email or reminder that I had to do that. Our bylaws don't state that it has to, that, a, that it has to be, um, a notice has to be sent out by the nominee committee. It's something that we should probably look into yeah. going forward, but. Excuse me. I know I Jeremy had me read the state. Can I, can I, can we stop for one second? Because you have a motion on the floor, and I'd like to finish that first before we get the back. I know you interrupted okay. my party. I understand. Okay, so it's, but it's important what you're saying too. Yeah. So we'll get back to that, Harry. I promise. Let's just finish the motion that's on the floor okay. right now. Okay. So is, any discussion about the grassroots partnering event? Lisa. What is the time commitment on those days? Hello. Okay, so usually um, it's nine o'clock in, in the morning it starts to packing in terms of packing the food. Um, it usually takes about an hour. And after that, there um, you can drive um, and deliver food if you like. So you have an option. Mm -hmm. So it's whatever time you finish delivering food, if you, if you choose that option. Naomi, can you just repeat the time? Sure, it starts about 9 a.m. It's usually about an hour. We pack food, they have music, and you know, the, and everybody partners up. And um, after that, you deliver food. So I'm thinking maybe an hour to two hours dedication after, depending on how many homes you deliver to. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Um, Mary, go ahead. Do you have a microphone? Sorry, you might have already said this. I see on the agenda it says either the 29th and slash or the third. Has it been decided if we're doing one, the other, or both? We're doing both. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Any other questions regarding the grassroots project? Okay, we could go ahead. Okay, um, any objections? 
Any abstentions? Wonderful, I think we passed. Okay, so now Thank it is you. officially a Bronx Community Board event. So Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, up next, oh wait, Harry, we you wanted to address your concern. So, so basically it's never been, the, the nominating committee has never actually reached out to anyone to remind them of it. It was announced at the April committee, at the April uh, full board meeting. It's been part of the bylaws for a few years now that that's, that's the way it goes. So unfortunately, and I do apologize that you didn't realize and that you weren't notified of it, but it doesn't preclude you from, from the election. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah, Jeremy also had me read that statement in the absence of Joanne last month. I read, this, I read the statement that people have to submit their statements uh, right. to, to Jeremy. I just want I just want people to understand you can write in Harry's name if you right. if you want him to be sergeant of arms just write in his name and his reason, name is listed yeah. in the agenda. I just want people to understand the reason that. we read out the names one is for informational purposes but also so people would be aware that they can vote for these people even if their names are not on the ballot they were nominated it does not um, it does not make their nomination invalid because they're not on the ballot, but it's just because we're trying to file, file, uh, follow the bylaws and procedure the way it is written. Again, we can change it and we could make it a little more clear for next time, but right now, yeah. Yes, absolutely. So uh, Jeanette, you have a question? So I have two questions. So everyone that was on the survey that you sent, the reason their names are on it is because they submitted their bios prior to the 72 hours? So the chair and, and uh, secretaries, yes. Those people that are on there did submit it 72 hours prior to tonight. Okay. Debbie was just nominated and that's why she, her name is on there because there is no 72 hour period because she doesn't have 72 hours that's happening right now. Okay, so My, that's the only exception. The other thing I just need to be clear on. So if we write someone in and they happen to get the most votes, they would win? We've had that happen before, first of all. Second of all, it's this is a loophole that needs to be closed. So while we do still have a bylaws committee, maybe we can, this should be closed. This should be rectified, in my opinion. Go ahead, Stacey Ann. Somebody pass Stacey Ann a microphone, please. But if Debbie was just nominated, how come her name was on the ballot already? She's the only exception because the nominations for Sergeant at Arms were still open. There is no 72 hour period for her to be able to submit the, the um, her statement. Oh, you just typed Yeah, in. that's the only exception. Because if she if she had been nominated last month and she did not provide a statement, her name would not be on the it either. There's no exceptions to that particular um, rule at this point. And again, like Harry suggested, we should. Apparently, Debbie does have a statement. So if you'd like to read them, no, I pass just wanted around. to be clear on that. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. And, and I did send out, even though they were late, I did send, we did send out today ads, Harry's and, and um, Rich's. And I, I had every intent on sending Ed and Harry's out before because they sent it on Tuesday. It's just been, it's been really crazy. All right. I, it's, like, I forgot my laptop today. That's how crazy it's been. So uh, you got that? No, I, cause I just sent it to you. Yeah. Well, he, I'll come over. Anybody else having issues? Everybody else vote? Everybody else fine? If, let me know. Okay, we have Parks and Recreation. Janice, I saw you. Janice, yeah, there she is. Can you hear me? Okay, good evening, everyone. We had a parks committee meeting this week and um, we voted uh, on the parkway being widened, the path being widened. 
we voted uh, at that meeting not to widen widen the path because of um, accidents and various problems. Okay, so our recommendation to the Parks Department was to not widen the path so as to cut down on accidents and various other things, okay? And uh, maybe what else? What else? I just wanted to, to just make a little clarification, just as a reminder. Go ahead. There was no quorum at the parks meeting. Okay, so, so we'll have to vote now. Well, no, no. We voted at leadership okay. for this motion. So if you want to, I just want his clarification so it's on record. Okay. Yeah, that's my error. So it should have appeared under the leadership well, committee. Don't worry about it. No big deal. So um, okay. you could go ahead with the motion. We don't need a second because okay. it was voted in committee. So you could go ahead okay. with the rest of it. Uh, we made a motion in leadership that the path on the Pelham Parkway area not be widened because of various accidents and um, the motorbikes that are using the pathway. Come on, add it. No, that, um, I'll read the motion the way it was written. Go ahead. Because we want it paved. Okay, so. So one thing, so we do want it paved. Yeah, that's what called. That's what resurfacing is. That's not, right, but she was not reading it from the. Oh, okay. All right. Want, now, sure hold on. Hold, right. hold on. Let me let me also clarify one thing because I got complaints from the public. It's not a pedestrian path, which is what I originally wrote, and I confirmed with the park store apartments officially called the Greenway. That's why that language is there too. Debbie, if you want to read the motion. Motion at Community Board 11 requests that the City Parks Department resurface but not widen the Greenway of Pelham Parkway as proposed by the Parks Department on June 13th, 2024. Janice, you could go ahead with the rest of the motion if you want to finish it. You sure? Okay, Debbie, you're going to finish it? Okay, so let's open it up for discussion. Any discussion? What's the width of the parkway now? Do you, do you know about? Eight, eight. eight and some and 10 is okay. Just for information only, uh, you can make a decision on your own. They do a lot of studies on safety and how people walk. That's what architects and engineers and, and landscape people do. And the recommended distances for families like four feet, 48 inches, and then another 48 inches for bike lanes. So for safety reasons. So they do those studies to try to figure out what's the best way to provide safety, right? So think about what you're doing, but you know, I understand the problem. And also they do have studies on how to test for trees, if they're diseased or not. There is there's a study that's done. An arborist can, can do that easily. And uh, I work with a lot of them. I work with a lot of landscape people, a lot of arborists, a lot of that. So I'm a design professional myself. I'm an architect. So the studies are done, the historical studies. So just for your information, thanks. Thanks, or anybody else brought, have any discussion? It was also brought to our attention that in some, in, in another Greenway, when they redid theirs, the parks department said eight feet was sufficient. If so I remember it, correctly, that was a few years ago, but yes, that was right the, at the time. The yeah. other Greenway in, I'm referring to was, yes, it was a few years ago, but parks department said that was ADA sufficient. Okay, thank you. And, okay, I saw Jeanette first and then we'll go to Ryan. One second, Ryan, thank you. Testing. So a lot of discussion was made on the unsafety because of the motorized vehicles. Those motorized vehicles, that should be a separate issue. And we need to figure out what to do about those vehicles because whether that pathway is eight feet, 10 feet or 12 feet, there's gonna be motorized vehicles on it. What I do know from walking the path myself many times, you either have the people who are riding bikes going onto the green which is damaging the green, or you're going on the green 
to for for safety reasons. So I I think it's important to be clear on all aspects of what's really going on in terms of a a two foot difference. I also appreciated. Um, I've spoken to more than a few arborists because at, at my co-op with the co-op we have a lot of trees that we're trying to save. So if they did studies with arborists to see what trees were and were not diseased, I think that that's something that should also be taken into consideration. But the majority of what I heard tonight was about the safety issues, about the vehicles, and those vehicles are gonna be on that pathway until they're prevented. You know, not widening it two feet is not going to prevent those vehicles from being there. Thank you. Thank you. Ryan? Yeah, thanks. I just wanted to say that I'm also in support of the widening. I use the pathway most days. And whether I'm walking by myself, pushing a stroller, riding a bike myself, or riding a bike with my five-year-old, I honestly cannot think of a time, even in the middle of winter, where I have not had to get off onto the grass at least once. The, the video that Diana shared shows it as well as anything. That was on a Tuesday evening, not a Saturday afternoon. Um, there's simply not enough space. And I don't see any evidence that providing more space is going to invite more motorized traffic. I see the, those vehicles on sidewalks and much smaller areas all over the city. So I agree with Jeanette, we need to, that's a separate problem, that's a separate issue. And it is an issue, um, but it's not gonna be solved by maintaining the size of the pathway. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, Wendy? I think testing. Um, just for our recommendation, maybe this is something that we can do because as a, as a person who, whose car was hit by a motorized scooter, um, I know that there's legislation trying to pass in regards to the motorized scooters should they get insurance. Um, and I think that that's something that the community boards need to push. You know, a letter needs to be formulated and passed on to the political officials to say that this is very important, right? Because the more space that you create, the more bicycles, the more scooters, the more motorized, motorized vehicles that you have. And it's already a problem with the batteries, right? So how many fires have we seen? So it's a bigger issue um, that we should somehow address. Thank you, Wendy. Anyone else have any discussion? Okay, so we're going to close discussions on this motion. Um, so any objections? You think roll call is going to be necessary? Okay, well. Well, if they can, yeah, so well, let's try it first without roll call because Jeremy's in the middle of, of doing, you can do it, you want to do it? Okay. The motion is motion that Community Board 11 requests that the City Parks Department resurface but not widen the Greenway of Pelham Parkway as proposed by the Parks Department on June 13, 2024. So let's try it with hands first. And if it looks like it's going to be too confusing, we'll go to roll call. Okay, objections. We have, I'm going to read your names. If I miss you, let me know. Cynthia Rodriguez, Lisa Soto, Angel Diaz, Jeanette Wilson, Stacey Ann DeLeon. Oh, hold on. I'm getting to the tables first. Anyone on this side? No? Okay, online. We have Ryan Barthel, Edgar Aguirre, and Susan Perez. So that's eight. Any abstentions? Yeah. We have Juan Luciano abstaining. 
Oral, you have state? Okay, so uh, oral is, Selkridge is gonna be a recusal. Anyone else abstaining in person, online? Okay, so I think motion still passes. So eight against. Eight against. How many abstain? Two abstentions. One, one abstention and one recusal. Okay, then it's recusals don't pass. It's motion carried, 26 in favor. Okay, 26 well, in 20, favor. 20, no, 20, 25. Sorry, correction for the record, 25 in favor. Motion passes. Okay, transportation. Uh, hey, uh, Rabbi, do you want to take transportation? Can someone pass a microphone? Let Hazel talk. <laughs> there you oh, go. Okay. Hi again. Um, we made a motion that the community board send the city and the Bronx Department of Transportation commissioners. Wait, this is a little confusing. No, I know. First of all, I don't have my glasses, so I'm sorry. I made a motion that the community, that community board 11 send the city and Bronx Department of Transportation commissioners, the committee's daylight resolution, daylighting resolution. Okay. The resolution, I believe, was emailed, and I think it was also handed out. Was it handed out today, Jeremy? Hello? No, that's not one of the ones that was handed Hello? out. My apologies. Hello? I don't know why it's anywhere. Uh, I, I made one or two copies, because I because it is online. It's on the agenda. Um, it was discussed in transportation. There were some tweaks, but... You should have, I think I gave you a copy, Veronica, or somebody has a copy there or no? No, I don't have a copy. I don't have a copy of it. Is no, there I... one over here somewhere? Oh, wait, no. No, this is budget priorities, I think. I just, I, I did it? have, yeah, that's it. Okay, I'll read it out. You want to read it out? No. no. <laughs> okay, so the letter reads as such. Dear Commissioner Rodriguez and Borough Commissioner Perez, we are writing to inform you that Bronx Community Board 11 has voted in favor of a resolution to support Mayor Adams' plan for universal daylighting in New York City. This plan will make our district and city safer for all road users. Daylighting is a measure that has proven to reduce deaths and injuries where it has been successfully implemented. And NYC DOT's data show that the most common way for people outside of cars to be seriously injured is while legally crossing in a crosswalk. We urge DOT to prioritize intersections that serve the most vulnerable pedestrians near community centers, senior centers, schools, and parks, and to implement daylighting with physical barriers such as green stormwater infrastructure, scooter share parking, bike parking, flexible divider posts, et cetera. Using physical barriers is critical to increase compliance without having to increase the enforcement burden on NYPD. This measure is widely supported by our elected officials with all our city council members at the time voting in favor of measure 854-A, a daylighting bill that was passed but not enacted in 2022. A public letter of support from Assemblyman Alvarez, unanimous support from our transportation committee and support from CB11 with, and then we will enter how many people vote in favor of it tonight. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Veronica. Um, do we have any discussion on this? Anybody online? Okay. Okay. It's gonna eliminate many, 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 many parking spaces. Do you have any idea how much it would eliminate it in our community? Because parking is already a big problem. Um, Rabbi, do we have that answer for her? I'm happy to respond to Rabbi if you'd prefer. Ryan, go ahead. All right. So the uh, Mayor Adams resolution is eventually to 
implement it universally, but the actual numbers he's suggesting is 500 per year across the city. So for our community board, if they were distributed equally, it would be about 10 intersections per year. Um, but we also have to keep in mind that that depends on um, DOT having the budget for that and the streets that are getting treated because they would plan to do this most likely during a repaving. Um, so it's it would be a very gradual phase in of the parking. At most, it is one parking spot on each corner of the intersection, right? So it's it's a New York state law and it requires no parking within 20 feet of an intersection. So that's about one parking spot. Oh, okay, thank you. I also wanna add that in the committee, I mentioned that they gotta also do enforcement because if you're gonna put a daylighting and then somebody's gonna park there with a placard or what have you, what's the purpose of the daylighting if there's no enforcement? Okay, thank you, Joanne. Any other discussion? Okay, so let's move on. Do we have any objections? And we have one objection, which is Joanne Rubino. Oral. Oral is recusing himself. Recusing himself. Hold on. Just got to write this in. Anyone else objecting, recusing themselves? Do we have any abstentions? Oh, okay, thank you very much. The motion passes. Okay, next um, we have economic development. I'll pass that over to Joanne. Okay, I'm the acting chair of economic development. Unfortunately, we did not have a quorum. So we could not uh, have any motions to approve anything. And we also couldn't pick uh, any new chair or co-chair. So uh, to echo what Veronica said, people really need to come to committee meetings. Anyway, um, let, let's do this quickly. Uh, there were three uh, renewals. Um, two of, renewals. Two renewals. Two. Oh, no, I'm, a sorry. Corporate change. I'm sorry, two renewals and one corporate change. Of the three, none of them, we, we checked with Chris Kirka, and of the three, there are no issues with any of these businesses. So I'd like to put them all in one thing. Uh, the one is uh, Joe and Ed Caterers, which is for Telly's on East Chester, 2507 East Chester Road, renewal, Golden Corral, uh, uh, 2375 East Tremont Avenue as a renewal. And uh, can, I have to do those two, right? And then it's separate. Okay, so we have a motion that uh, CB11 send the New York State Liquor Authority an email of no objection for those businesses. Um, do I have um, Do I have a second? Okay, second. One. Sandy or one? Okay, one. All right. Uh, also. Um, for burger time, for the corporate change, uh, we have a motion that CB11 send the New York State Liquor Authority an email of no objection for their corporate change. Um, do I have a second for that? Okay. okay are there so any wait a minute. For the object, oh, are Why there any the objections? Why second it, but we need to finish the first motion oh, before so we sorry. move on to the second okay. one. Okay. So okay. sorry about that. So are there any discussion regarding uh, Fratelli's and Golden Corral? Uh, any issues with, with that? Um, anybody online? Any issues with that? Okay. Um, so we could ask for any objections. Are there any objections? Thank you. No objections. Okay. Abstentions. And are any abstentions? Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Motion passes and unanimously. the motion passes unanimously. As far as burger time, um, are there any objections? Well, just so you, just for the clarification, the corporate name, um, from our understanding, it's the same owner. They're just putting it under a different corporate name, but it's still the same owner. Well, they have two parking lots. 
Uh, Juan Luciano seconded the second motion. So the second motion, just so we know, is to send a letter to the State Liquor Authority of no objection to the corporate change for burger time. Okay, so are there any objections? Any abstentions online or, or here in person? No, okay, then it's unanimous. All right. Motion passes, thank you, thank very you much. Joanne. No problem. Okay, now we're gonna move on to City of Yes. I'll send it over to Wendy. <laughs> Testing. Testing. Good evening, everyone. Um, so the city of yes, we had our public hearing um, this month, early part of this month, and we have made an, a recommendation that was attached to the agenda. Um, I hope you all had a chance to read the recommendation. Um, we are re recommending a no vote to the housing opportunity. Um, at this point, we do make a recommendation, suggest that housing and land use meet, do a joint meeting. We are willing to do that meeting as well. We do also believe that a vision series must be done within this community. Even if it's after the facts of July 10th, a vision series for this community is needed because it gives the opportunity for all parties, you know, um, homeowners, tenants, businesses, just the entire community to come together, to participate on a workshop, to find out what the real needs are within the community. So the recommendation is a no. Please read the recommendation. It took us time to write it. It's very important. It speaks to, we took everyone's um, letters and saying into consideration. Um, there was a resolution that Bob Press um, wrote for us, but Bob, the only reason why I'm not putting it out there is because the committee didn't vote on it. So if that housing and land use committee meet along with at, at the ad hoc committee, we would put the resolution on the table. Any questions? Um, Wendy, when are you suggesting that the committees meet? Well, as we are, soon as possible? Or? We wanted to do it before July 10th, okay. um, but time is of the essence. So if land use and housing gets back to us, we can settle on a date. Okay. Okay. I will. I'll talk with Ken. Okay. Thank you. And and my co-chair. Okay. Um, since you are technically a community co um, committee member, yes, go ahead. Um, you need a microphone. Uh, the board tonight would have to authorize the special committee that to uh, send a letter in the name of the board. All right. And it can, it's in power. It, we've done this on other boards where the community board, since it's not meeting over the summer, allows the land use committee to speak for the board. So that's what you're going to have to do tonight to take care of Wendy's, nomin you know, Wendy's motion is to allow the land use committee and city of yes committee to speak for the board. That's all. Okay, so I think what he's saying is since you're going to be meeting in July, we're not going to have a full board meeting. Right. Whatever motion that you put forth in the in that meeting, if the full board is uh, in agreement, then that would be what you would send out. Right. That's what you have to vote on. And the other option, and uh -huh. it's always been an option, is that we have an emergency full board meeting. That, I would say that. I would say that because I the committee needs a chance to to take a deep dive into the resolution, and we need to. Yeah, we may need to change some wording, but it gives us an opportunity to do that. So, would the full board meeting be before the tenth? I don't. I don't know. know. We yeah. Okay, so. Just unless something else should come up. Wait, I think, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. I think Rich wants to, to say something. I think something. the question is, when do they need our vote on the city of right. Yes Housing? July 10th? Okay. Right, so, so, I mean, if we don't meet by then. So that's, that's why I'm that's asking if the issue. full board would so be need to before hedge. July 10th. Because anything that's voted on I, at the committee would have to be voted on at the full I think, board. I think for, for just the easy peasiness of it, 
we would like to put forth our recommendation. That's what as I, would, is. I would say is. As is? Yeah. As yep. is. Okay. All right. Now, if, if, if Hazel and land use would like to have a meeting to further discuss this with the ad hoc, we're open to that as well. Okay. Okay. So I think you just, oh, there's a hand up. Where's their hand up? Oh, Kiara. I don't know. Uh, Jeremy, does Kiara have speaking abilities? Kiara, hold on one second. Okay, Kiara, uh, we should be able to hear you now if you want to unmute. Uh, hi, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, I just wanted to note um, you are referencing July 10th, which is the here um, the city planning deadline. Um, but there will be a borough board vote if the board wanted to be included on that on July 8th. Okay, that would be thank you for that. Thank you. Victoria, I have one Victoria. Kenny, go ahead. Yeah, one question. My understanding is that we're going to be voting on the recommendation tonight, and the recommend and the and the recommendation that we have a further meeting to, in a sense, to clarify and present further our further recommendations. But our vote will to be taken tonight. Any any meeting that we with that any joint meeting would not affect the what our what our recommendation would be to the Department of City Planning. Am I correct on that? Okay. Yes. Okay, and for the uh, Bronx Borough uh, meeting, if whoever is going to be attending could actually read the recommendation at the meeting, so that way it's in everything is in line to what the board is in agreement with. Okay. So, um, you can move on. Would you want to make a motion? I would like to make a motion uh, to approve the recommendation from the City of Yes Ad Hoc Committee for the housing opportunity. Seconded by Ed Perez. Ready for a question? Any discussion? All those in favor? I think it's easier to just look at it. We have people online. I oh, think it's easier just anyone to online? go to objections. Objections? No? Motion okay. passes. We have one recusal, oh, one, Carl okay. Selkridge. Oh. Yeah. Ryan? Oh, he took it off? Your hand was raised. Was that for the vote? Correct. That was, that was an objection. Okay. Thank you. Ryan objection. Okay. Was there anyone else that objected? No. So we have one recusal and one objection. Motion passes. Oh, sorry. My apologies. Any abstentions? I thought we did that already. No, no abstentions. So motion passes. Thank one you. recusal, one objection. Now we're moving on to education, culture, and youth services. Um, who's going to be taking that, Mary? Hi. Yes. So um, we met. So just for some context around, um, I am currently chair of the committee. Um, we met and we talked a little bit about creating a little bit of a plan or a vision for how we would like this committee to start being a little bit more engaged, more hands-on with um, schools and with CBOs and organizations that serve our community and with our youth. Um, one of the things that we've worked on in uh, offline that we started in committee was creating a co comprehensive list of all the schools within uh, Community Board 11. So elementary schools, middle schools, high schools, um, and identifying who school leadership is so that we can I, uh, invite them to a roundtable discussion over the course of the summer um, to really understand what their needs are, what they're seeing, um, introduce them a little bit to the board, um, to the committee as well, the resources that we have available to them uh, and the different ways that we can partner. Um, we envision this being 
wraparound services. Um, so that might take the form of things like attending school meetings to understand what's happening, you know, with their staffing organization, understanding, you know, teacher needs, retention rates. Um, you know, we know that consistency with teachers is really important to student success, and we want to make sure that we have our eyes on the ground with them. Uh, we have concerns also with D75 schools um, and what their needs are as well. Uh, and we want to make them aware, also school leadership aware, that there are levers that we can pull, whether that, you know, writing a letter of support on their behalf for, you know, requests, whether those are budgetary or staffing that they're making to the Department of Education, to City Council, whatever the case may be, connecting them with other nonprofit organizations. Uh, one of the things that we're also really interested in working with schools on is career um, career and college engagement and exploration with young people um, and making informed choices around high school selection process as well. Um, so we'll have more soon there. Thank you. Uh, question, uh, sorry. So you said um, you're gonna be updating the comprehensive list on the community board website. Is that what you said? Uh, we have a list right now of the public schools. I have to take a look at that list and see how that coincides. But if there are any changes, we're happy to share those over so that those updates could be made. All right, thank you. That's it, Mark. Okay, thank you so much. Um, up next, community development and budget priorities. Ryan, do you wanna take that? Sure. Um, I'll leave our most recent event, the Juneteenth event to the end, because I'll leave that to Stacey Ann to talk about. The other things that we spoke about at our meeting were the Mayor's Neighborhood Support Team. Jeremy Hazel and I were able to have our first meeting with the Neighborhood Support Team. And as I mentioned at last month's meeting, the idea of that team is to try and bring together different agencies throughout the city to try and solve problems that we have identified in the neighborhood. That list was originally put together by Phyllis Nastasia and, um, and uh, Serena, whose name, last name I'm blanking on. I apologize, Serena. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, so, um, but we had a good first meeting and the next step is our contact in the mayor's office will identify the appropriate agencies and set up a meeting between us and them on the different priority areas that we found. The other major thing that we have on the horizon is, I don't know if everyone remembers, but last September, we voted on a resolution that all of our committees would submit their budget and expense requests to the Community Development and Budget Priorities Committee by the end of June for that year's bu um, budget and expense requests. So the end of June is coming up very quickly. So I understand that those may not be prepared yet, but I hope that you all will be able to prepare them soon. And I believe Veronica and Jeremy are working on sending out a reminder of that to committee chairs. Um, if there are... Can I interrupt you for a second, Ryan? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Ryan, I did recreate a form um, to make it easier for people to fill out. Did you get that? Uh, I... I sent out to the full board. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Okay. It was. Okay. And just to Ryan's point, um, I don't think anyone has submitted anything to the uh, budget priorities committee. June 30th is the cutoff, so that way they would not be hurrying to put everything together for this October submission. Even if the June 30th day passes, I encourage everyone on the committees, we have email, go back and forth, think of something that your committee feels would be, um, would be worth referring to the Budget and Priorities Committee and send it to them. Because it's important that we get this in. It, that's what we're here for. That's one of our responsibilities. We need to be able to do something for the community and put it out there. So again, even if the June 30th passes, email your committee. I'm asking this of the chairs and the co-chairs. Get a discussion going, get some ideas, and get it over to Ryan and Stacey Ann so they have time to do it. We don't want it to be in September because then they have to rush to put it together. It's not an easy process from what I've been told. So please, we've asked you since, I don't know, April or May, so please, just everybody, please get together and get some um, suggestions over to the committee. Thank you. I have a quick comment, question. Go ahead. Um, why not just move it to the end of July? 
instead of rushing that next two weeks, I think if well, we just get that's what it. I'm saying, even if it's past, know, but June let's 30th. say it so like if folks can uh plan for it. I, if we leave it open, I feel like folks are just going to forget, like we did last year. Well, I'll leave that up to Stacey that's just a and, suggestion. and to um, Ryan, and to, Ryan Stacey, to make the deadline however they feel fit. Because if we just say, hey, whenever you can, I just feel like no one's going to do it. Go ahead, Ryan. Um, we can certainly do that. We could make a mo um, make a motion to accept because we did. We already voted on the June thirtieth, so I'll make a motion that we extend the deadline for submitting budget priorities request to July thirty first, or we can do August thirtieth. That'd be all right too. Um, just get in by the end of the summer. And that still gives me Stacy Ann and I, and hopefully some fresh new faces, a couple of months to put them in. So I make a motion that we extend the deadline for submitting budget and ex or capital and expense or budget and expense requests to the Community Development and Budget Priorities Committee from June 30th to August 30th. Any discussion? That. I'm sorry, just I that. second that. Stacey Ann seconds the motion. I'm sorry, just discussion a little bit. Can you, is there any way, if this passes, can you guys send an email who to send, submit um, our request to? Because I don't, it, we'll send it, because of the reminder. changes. Yeah, because I'll ask the stand to send a reminder like, along with the form that you provided. Right. So that way everything will be in one yes. email and everybody won't have to go looking around for Beautiful, you. you're in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So any other discussion? Okay. Stacy Ann did second it, yes. Okay. Yeah, Stacy Ann seconded it. Ryan made the motion, uh, seconded by Stacy Ann. Ryan, you could go ahead with the motion. All right, are there any objections? None seen. Abstentions? None. Sounds like it passes. Okay, passes unanimously. So the new deadline is August 30th and the staff will send out an email reminder and we will. Um, I will ask the staff also to send it out again at the end of July as another reminder with all the information in it. So thank you. Um, um, go ahead, the, Ryan. Uh, yeah, the only thing left is I'd like to pass it off to Stacey Ann to talk about the wonderful Juneteenth event that she took on. Good, good evening, everybody. So on June 15th, we have our highly successful Juneteenth event at Brady Court, which was spearheaded by me and Cynthia also helped me, which we took over from Serena. We are in the process of sending out thank you notice to all our sponsors and donors. And we'd like to thank all our community members that attended and the Bronx Chronicle for the beautiful article. We'd like to also thank our elected officials that sponsored or were in attendance, Congresswoman AOC, Senator Natalia Fernandez, Senator Gustavo Rubio, Council Member Chrissy Mamarada, Council Member Aswell Felix, Assembly Member John Zakara. District Attorney Darcel Clark and our former council member Velasquez, Marjorie Velasquez. And it was a beautiful event and we hope to see all of y'all next year. Thank you. Thank you. Next, health and social services, Sandy. Good evening, everyone. One first thing is a letter of support for the pediatric nurses who came from Montefiore requesting our help. And Jeremy, I hope the letter is done and I hope it's sent out. All right. To the health fair, I want to thank Cynthia for helping me put it together because we were the only two really working at it. And I thought it went well for the first time. The heat wave really took its toll, but I thought it went very well. And I think people that came were very happy and pleased. 
That's all. Thank you, Sandy. I just, I just want to say that, um, Sandy, thank you so much for doing all of that hard work. It, it was a very good fair, and I just wish more people came out. There was so much good information, um, especially um, that's affecting our community. So please, next year. Come oh, out. yeah. <laughs> and next year, I'm thinking we will not do it in June. Too many things are happening in June, from Juneteenth to graduation to Father's Day and the weather, so maybe April or May. And we've had some really good participants and they'll come back. And so let's keep it going. And hopefully more members of the committee will help and come to the fair. Thank you, Sandy. You're welcome. Okay, moving on to housing. I'm gonna let Richard. Rich, can you speak on housing? Um, we had a presentation by Care for the Homeless for the DSS Blondell Shelter. Um, it was really, really good in terms of transparency and information. I think one of the major things that came out of that meeting was uh, they're going to have a community kind of board for this uh, homeless shelter. So they're going to have meetings. I'm not sure if it's monthly or bi-monthly, but they intend to fully engage as a community. So look out for more information on the Blondell Shelter Community Board. Um, they want our voices. They want us to talk and be involved. So the presentation went well. If you can, look it up on YouTube. It was a good presentation. That's all. Hold on to the microphone. Yep. <laughs> um, before we get to the next committee, I just want to let the elected official representatives that are online, if you wish to speak, please put up your hand starting now so that way we can get to you and we could get um, you access. So Rich, um, Ellie is online, but he has asked if you can take over for public safety. As for what? To, um, to okay, just so. announce the new chair. Uh, we, we need a new chair and we need more members. So, I mean, at this point, I think the wise thing to do is to wait a couple of months until we get more uh, board members and then see, you know, assign folks on. But um, Ellie, I hope you're not telling me to be chair. <laughs> 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 so we'll figure this out in September. That's all. All right. Okay. Uh, Victoria. Uh, Annie, I apologize. I, I skipped over land use by accident. So please go ahead. Thank you. The land use is not in the meeting, and we do not have a report on the normal land use things. However, in a sense, I have a report on a reverse land use. That is, there was an illegal land use. Uh, they, they opened up a an illegal car wash on Pelham Parkway South between Tomlinson and Williamsbridge Road. And I'd like to, I'd like to thank the Councilwoman Marmorados and the staff of the community board for getting it closed down very quickly. Thank you. Thank you, Kenny. And um, sanitation and environmental protection. Avril, is she, she's not online, is she? Anyone wanna speak on uh, sanitation? Uh, Janice, since someone give her the, we got it. Okay, um, the blocks from Allerton and Barker to, I would say, the block where CBS starts is filthy. We need to get someone over there to look at it because it is filthy, okay? Um, if um, Who's on that committee? Avril is the chair. Uh, okay. Wendy. All right. Right. <clears throat> we didn't have quorum. Okay. I understand um, that. But I understand that. Definitely we'll get in I contact with to, somebody. I need for someone from the committee to come and look at the street. Okay. From um, Olinville up to where CBS begins, the block where CBS begins. Okay. And just take a walk. Okay. I'm telling you, it's filthy. I'll do that tomorrow. Okay. Okay. And I'll take you drive by. Yeah. Get out your car and just walk from Olinville to the block where CBS begins. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That concludes our committee reports. We're going to move on to the elected officials. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just I just wanted to I'm remind. Sorry. I do apologize. 
I just want to, I want people to mark this date down. September 16th is my um, ethics and disciplinary committee, and we're going to have open meetings law come and do a presentation. So I want you guys to please come out in droves. <laughs> In droves, please, because there's so much confusion, and I really want her to or him to get questions that uh, about open meetings, so that we're just so clear, and then our meetings run so nicely next year. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, so we're going to go to Bronxboro President's Office. Kenny or Kiara, would you like to speak? Uh, Kiara, you have the ability to speak if you want to. You don't have to, but if you want to. Okay. We're going to move on. Uh, Council Member Mamorado's office. Do we have someone in person? Ready? Just a reminder, um, it's two minutes or so for speaking time. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to see about unmuting Kiara. Oh, that was you doing it? Sorry. She was unmuted. She's, oh, well, no. Hello, everyone. As you know, I'm from um, City Councilwoman Christy Mamarada's office. My name is Renata. I'm one of the um, community liaison person. Today, I'm here to talk about the pot shops. That's something she's very committed to closing within our area. Please go online to her Facebook page and report them. We are closing them and trying to get them sealed. Next is the graffiti removal efforts. We are definitely trying to remove all the graffiti. We are trying to focus a lot on Lydic Avenue. As we know, it has been removed, but has been re -graffiti. The second one, is, the third one is the removal of the ghost cars. Um, if you have any ghost cars, please call our office and report them. Just to let you know, a ghost car is a car that has no license, no registration, and no inspection. If a car is parked there with license plate and registered, please do not contact our office. If it has no license, no registration, no inspection, please call. The next one are potholes. We are noticing that there's a, a bunch of them popping up around the area. You can call the office if you see any as we are getting them fixed. Um, right now, we're also working with the 49th Precinct to keep the 4th of July safe. If you see fireworks, this is a reminder, please call 911 immediately. They will respond and they will have extra officers there. Um, next is we're having a shredding event on 723 at our office at 3040 East Tremont Avenue. You could come over for it and drop off your stuff. We're having a summer music series salsa performance on 728 from 7 to 8 Pelham Bay at Pelham Bay Park. Um, we also have um, immigration services and NIDC will be visiting our office the fourth Tuesday of the month. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Renata. I have a quick question. When you're asking about, when you're mentioning about the ghost cards, what about the ones that we know are fake illegal paper plates? If the illegal plates are expired, that is considered a ghost car. Thank you. Oh. So the shredding event is 723 at City Councilwoman Christy Mamarada's office, 3040 East Tremont Avenue. Um, I, there's, flyers over there. there's flyers over here. I could get you a flyer. I'm sorry. I, I have a question one. for your office, Mar Marauders office. Right. Do you have a list, sir, for all these events that you're doing? Yes, we have a bunch of flyers on the desk. Oh, no, a list, sir. A list, sir. Like you email out what um, your events are. A distribution are. list. A sir. distribution list? I, I think so. I'm not really sure. sure. Okay. No. <laughs> but if you want to be on it, I could get you on it. Okay. I'll get you information. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Renata. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, moving on to Council Member Felice's office. Anyone in person or online? Okay. Uh, Council Member Riley's office. Come on. Hi. Hello, everyone. I'm Kevon Bold from Councilmember Riley's office. Um, I'm going to be quick. A couple of uh, upcoming events we have. This one is our silent disco. 
which will be taking place tomorrow from five to eight in the section five Greenway in Co-op City. We also have our family day taking place Saturday from 12 to four, same place, section five, Greenway in Co-op City. Um, we're also working on our community sports day, which will be taking place August 3rd. If you know of any um, sports team, any kids in the community who play soccer, football, softball, uh, basketball, they could call our office to sign up. We're accepting teams, individuals, and uh, people to help put on the event. Um, that's all for our events. Thank you guys for having us for this um, season. Yeah, this um, term of meetings. Looking forward to September, be here again. Thank you guys. We also sorry. have um, flyers over there. Sorry, question. I'm sorry, family day is? Family day will be Saturday. Saturday. This Saturday? This Saturday. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Silent disco tomorrow. And the, Silent disco tomorrow. Okay. And Family the Family day Saturday. And, and the children's, what ages for the children of the soccer, football, and basketball? Um, we're going to be starting at 14 and up. 14 and up. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Also have flyers over there if you want. I'll give you these also. Thank you. Hey, next, mayor's office. I thought I hit there. She has Alina. <laughs> <laughs> you, squat. you can give her the mic. <laughs> yeah, give it back. <laughs> Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much. I just wanted to take a moment just to obviously introduce myself to anyone on that line that's not familiar with me. I'm Alina Dow, Bronx Borough Director for the Mayor's Community Affairs. Um, thank you on behalf of the mayor for all the participation that everyone has done throughout the city on the city of yes. Um, now, moving forward, please join with the revision charter, um, the revision commission committee. The Revision Charter Commission um, Committee Commission that is happening right now online. Um, you can it, it's happening in different boroughs, but you're more than welcome to go online. Your voices continue to need to be heard. Um, in addition to that, I am not going on summer sabbatical, unfortunately. So if you guys need me, please feel free to contact me. My number is 914-446-8393. Um, my email is a dow that's a d o w e at city hall. .nyc.gov. I do encourage you to please, of course, if it's a complaint, to go to 311 first. And then if you realize that in like 72 hours that it hasn't been answered, then send me the complaint um, email and then I'll follow up for you. Um, this mayor is also going to be having a, a couple of events in August. That's when Summer Stages is going to be coming to Orchard Beach. The first two days, the first day is, um, I'll get you all the dates, but the first day, no, it's August. No, I work for the mayor. It's okay. It's all right. I know everyone gets confused. But in August, so the first day I think is going to be um, hip hop and reggae, and then the second event is going to be for Latin for um, for Latin music. So please come out and join if you can. Do other things in the city as well, and um, have a wonderful summer. And I just wanted to commend all of you for everything that you're doing. You guys have had uh, a tremendous difficult time, but you have worked through it, and it's amazing to see how much you guys are prospering. So congratulations to you all. Thank you, Alina. Yes. Hello. Okay. Um, at the last uh, board meeting, I remember it was the last one or the one before, and I believe it was you, but I mean, I'm not sure if it was you or somebody from the mayor's office. I asked about pre-K three funding to see if it was being reinstated into the budget. You said you would get back to me. And no, I um, I to you. It probably was me, okay. but I always tell you to please send me an email. I don't do budgets. Okay. So what I always recommend is please send me an email about it and then I'll forward it to the person who needs to speak to you about it. Okay, thank okay. you. All right. Any other questions? Any other questions? You ready? Oh, no, not a question? No, no, not a question. No, unfortunately not, Steve, not from the gallery. Thank you. Okay, so Jeremy, Joanne, are the results ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, we have one winner and we have two um, runoffs. Um, two, two winners. Oh, two winners and two runoffs. Okay. Um, Veronica Castro, 14. Cynthia Rodriguez, 18. So Cynthia won. And one abstention and, okay. Uh, for vice chair, Edward Perez, nine, Richard Reno, so 17, you need 18, okay? Uh, so, but he, that so has to be a runoff. 
Uh, okay, and there was also Cynthia Rodriguez, one, and abstentions were six. Um, for, let's see, where is that? for secretary, Hazel won with 21 votes. So she won unequivocally. Okay, yeah. So there is one discrepancy with the start secretary vote. I, I will figure out what it is. What it is when you type in somebody else's name, if you put a space, I, I have the formula so it will automatically count if it's spelled correctly. Uh, so I'll figure out what the one discrepancy because I only have a total of 32 votes for that. Um, but Wendy Hewlett Betts, one person put Hewlett Packard Betts. Um, that's why I was laughing earlier if you saw me. Um, uh, five, Juan Luciano, one, Hazel Muir, 21, Naomi Pemberton, one, four abstentions. So there's one vote I, not unaccounted for, but either way, it's clear the majority goes towards Hazel. So that's, she will be the next secretary. But go ahead, Joanne. Okay. Or Sergeant at Arms. Oh, for Sergeant at Arms, we have um, a tie with Debbie 16 and Harry 16. So there has to be a runoff and one abstention. And one abstention. Okay, so thank you. So, so I just uh, want to say thank you, everyone. I've enjoyed my time as acting chair. I don't know about that. <laughs> it's, it's been an eye opening experience, and I actually did enjoy the work that came with it. But at this time, I hand it over to Sydney. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That wasn't awkward, um, but thank you all. And I can only hope to honor Veronica's hard work because she's really put a lot into this um, kind of hitting the, hitting the ground running with everything that's been going on. Um, so I completely lost track of where we were. We were on... Lisa has a question. Okay, let's wait a second. Hey, so can I say something? I just wanted to thank Veronica for, I just wanted to thank Veronica for taking over, doing a, a fantastic, fantastic job and keeping us in order after such a you know crazy time. So thank you very much. So Jeremy, where are we in terms of ballots? Keep going, all right. So is there anyone present from the controller's office? Online, in person? Moving on to the public advocate's office. District attorney's office. Hi. Debbie will come. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Brian Gonzalez. I am from the district attorney's office. We don't have any events coming up, but what we are trying to share is that uh, the BXDA recently has put up what's called our BXDA dashboard. The dashboard, a lot of times we get a lot of questions of what is the office of the district attorney doing? The dashboard has data on arrests referred by the NYPD, prosecution charging decisions, arraigned cases, pretrial release and bail setting, case dispositions, sentencing, defendant, uh, and excuse me. And then it also has a glossary that um, defines a lot of legal terminology they use in these graphs. The reason why, so it, we're trying to update it every three months, but unfortunately this has only been updated as of January, 2024. So this is a, this, I really suggest that everybody kind of looks at it, play with the graphs to gather sort of, it gives you the numbers of um, what the DA's office has been doing while she's been in office. The data goes back, actually the data only goes back to 2019. It's just something new that we're trying to implement so that way you guys can be, uh, can look at it and see what we're doing on that front. And that's all I got. So I'm sorry, I'm not giving a lot of accolades tonight. I'm sorry, but Brian came to our ethics and disciplinary community and gave an excellent, excellent presentation on the DA's office and what they do. <laughs> And I just want you to revisit that video if you wanted to find out and, you know, you absolutely contact the DA's office. 
Next up, do we have anyone from Representative Ocasio Cortez's office? Can any can everyone please check your emails? Did you send the ballot? Jeremy sent the ballot out. Please check your emails for of the runoffs. Check your email. <laughs> Are you ready? Oh, sorry. I, I thought y'all were checking okay. the emails. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, firstly, I just wanted to thank y'all for for being good public servants. On you know, congratulating on finishing the year or half the year. Uh, obviously, it's not easy, and and you know, the congresswoman extends her thanks. Uh, a couple short updates. Uh, of course, everyone knows that the uh, Section 8 uh, voucher program recently had their the applications open up for the wait list. Uh, 633,000 households applied to be on the Section 8 uh, voucher wait list. Uh, if you have any questions, contact our office. We can try to assist. Um, I, I know different offices you know, try to assist with casework with that. We are one of them, uh, so you can always contact us. Uh, we're hosting our next grants webinar soon. Uh, we'll be hosting representatives from the National Endowment for the Humanities and the National Endowment for the Arts. If your organization is interested in attending, please come, uh, well, please sign up for the newsletter. You can sign it up, uh, sign yourself up on our website, which I'll uh, let you guys know a little bit later. Um, or you can email ny14grants at mail.house.gov. Uh, our office is now accepting applications for nominations for military service academies. Uh, so if you know any students that would like to apply, if you have any questions about the service, um, you know, please help, uh, I guess, please uh, contact our office uh, or email aoc.nominations at mail.house.gov. And finally, as a reminder, our office is here to help you with any issue pending before a federal agency. You can give us a call at 718-662-5970. Uh, again, that's 718-662-5970. Thank you so much and, and have a good summer. Thank you. Wendy? Um, regarding the Section 8 application, did you say 633,000? Yes. Yeah. I just, folks need to take that, like, listen to that number. And <laughs> then listen, mm -hmm. and then, yeah, and then say it again. Mm -hmm and keep saying it. It's an incredibly high number. To, to my understanding, and, and this is out of my personal capacity, this might be wrong, but only around 200 spots are available, right? Uh, so just to, to show the, the incredible discrepancy there. So I, I agree, yeah. I Just one last thing. I, I would charge the housing committee to really pay attention to how many applicants will actually get into those said units and what happens afterwards, right? We know City Phelps is existing, but we don't know how long that voucher is going to be in existing for, and we don't know what's gonna replace that. So I advise housing to really get on that sooner rather than later. Thank you. Do we have anyone from Representative Torres' office? Senator Fernandez's office? Senator Bailey's office, Senator Rivera's office. Evan, are you still with us? Yes, I am. Sorry about that, trying to unmute. Uh, I'm sorry? I said you're up. Okay, thank you. Uh, so thank you all. And uh, first, the assembly member would like to wish everybody a, a wonderful and safe summer. Please stay hydrated. Please stay cool. Um, we were so happy to see so many people out at our uh, block party last Saturday. Um, just so you are aware, uh, this uh, tomorrow, actually, this Friday, tomorrow will be a shredding event outside our office, 2018 Williamsbridge Road from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. If you can't make that, you feel free to drop off um, any uh, items you need shredded uh, to our office. We'll make sure that they go into the shredder. Um, number two, uh, as many of you saw in the in the district, uh, I think it was about last week, two weeks ago, um, the Department of Taxation and Finance, along with OCM, raided a number of smoke shops uh, and while some of them, they did not find any illegal cannabis inside the stores, the uh, people that were selling outside, the street vendors that were outside, I think one was on uh, Lightig Avenue, 
were removed and fined and noted. Um, there have also been a number that have been permanently padlocked, and we continue to drive past those stores to make sure that nobody's tampering with those padlocks. As always, our office uh, will be around for the summer. We have silent discos, movie nights coming up. Next one is the in on the 27th of July. Wonka's going to be showing. I'll have the, the location for you as we were just trying to finalize that um, in the coming days. And if you ever need us, our number is 718 718- Four zero nine zero one zero nine. Thank you to the board and have a wonderful summer. Thank you, Evan. Do we have anyone from Assembly Member Heastie's office? Anyone from Assembly Member Benedetto's office? Anyone from Assembly Member Reyes's office? Okay, so is anyone still needing to vote? Did everyone check their emails and submit their votes? Everyone online? Good? All right. Okay. So let's move on to old business. Anybody have any old business for us? A couple of board meetings ago, we had um, residents and representatives from East Chester Gardens come in, Mr. Brown and Miss, uh, a Miss, Mr. Nixon um, and a Miss Brown. Um, they brought up some concerns about East Chester Gardens. I was wondering if anybody from the housing committee or anybody from the community board uh, bothered to look into this because, you know, a few days after the meeting, I went over there and saw the conditions for myself of their community center. And it's really sad. So I was wondering, yeah, okay. Well, I mean, no, well, you know, I'm just asking, just asking, because I didn't know, that's all. The conditions of the, of the uh, space is not up to NIDC. We have no control, we just run programs. That's the NYCHA facility. So whatever's, whatever needs to be fixed, needs to be fixed by NYCHA. And if anybody here knows about NYCHA, they have tickets that are like a year old to get repairs done in apartments. So can you imagine how much time we've been waiting for the renovations to happen? And then we had funding for a lot of renovations and the city took it back. So Mr. Um, Ramsey, all, you know, when I was sitting there, I was really shocked that he attacked us. So we have a lot of programs running from there. And I couldn't even think of them because I was really shocked. I did not expect that from him. But, you know, we, we, it was not, we, he made it seem like we took the money. NIDC had nothing to do with that. The mayor, the previous mayor had allocated money to us or to NYCHA to fix the facility because it is in disrepair and it needs, and we're still running programs out of that space and running great programs, but they took the money back, which was out of our control. We had nothing to do with that. We, NIDC has absolutely nothing to do with that facility except run the programs that we're running. So yeah, it is a little disgusting and it does need a lot of improvement. And we were hoping that with the money that was coming in, we would be able to finally get all the improvements that we needed. You know, we run a health hub there with Montefiore and um, Albert, uh, Albert Einstein. We've run a lot of programs. I mean, for him to say that we do absolutely nothing was disgraceful and he should know better. So um, just just a little background. So part of me getting on the community board was because I, I do a lot of programming throughout the Bronx. I'm lucky enough to have been able to found the, the nonprofit Always Given Season. And because of my involvement, you know, with the community board, I was able to start doing work at East Chester. Um, so yes, similar to what Hazel is saying, NIDC does a lot of programming out of the community, out of the, uh, the rec center, if you will. Um, and it was in disrepair. They are doing some uh, renovations to it now. Um, there's obviously going to need to be a lot more work done to it. Um, what I would like to throw out there, similar to what Naomi and Wendy are doing with these upcoming events in, in August and where we're starting to reach out to the community, you know, now that kind of Veronica has guided us through the, through the storm, if you will, and we're starting to actually get to the, to the root of everything and doing work. Um, I would recommend that the community board look into getting a lot more involved. 
with East Chester Gardens. I, I, yes. Yeah, I, I would definitely like One to second. bring up the programmings. Like I've been lucky enough, again, very fortunate enough to do the program throughout the Bronx. And we are, we have been doing some stuff in East Chester Gardens recently. So, you know, as far as the renovations go, they are getting it done slowly, but surely I'm sure if we were to step in, we can probably help them speed it up, if you will. Um, but yeah, as, as the community board, we should definitely take this opportunity to, to get more involved, especially with East Chester Gardens. So. so what I do know is that at that meeting where Mr. Dixon was present, there was another young man there. After that meeting, um, I know that several board members did visit East Chester Gardens and had conversations with some of those people who were present. I'm not sure what the status was of things. So I think we can reach out to them um, and just kind of touch base and get ourselves back back in order with them. Let's say one more thing. Um, Hazel, I do appreciate you taking the time to come to the defense of NIDC, but I wasn't asking about any of that, all right? I just wanna make sure that we're bringing up this to light because we're at the end of the meeting and we've already had a couple of meetings and nobody's mentioned anything about East Chester Gardens. But when I do bring it up, it's a big defense. And we need solutions for these residents. We don't need excuses. So, hi. Thank you. Just one second. Let me go to Juanita. Hi. So, um, I think it was more, it's not just about the renovations, right? The health and safety for the children was in question, is why they shut it down and they had to go to a school and operate from the school. So I don't think it was more about, it. yeah, the renovations, but the cleanliness is horrible in there. I know, Angel, we've been in there together, and just to have to sit on a chair is, is disgusting. You know, roaches, rats, the children, the girls' bathroom doesn't have a door. The mold. The mold. So those things is something that could be, those things could be taken care of on our ends, you know, even if they had a deep cleaning person come in, COVID happened, no deep cleaning happened. So I, I, don't, I don't think it's just about the renovations, it's, it's the whole overall. And then it is ran by NIDC. The programs, we run the programs. Right, so how can we run we programs own, if yeah, nothing is safe? We don't own the building. And believe me, we put in complaints tonight, and like I said, but the, but, is, the, but the employees are your employees, for the right? And they should be cleaning or, you know, or there should be some type of cleaning well, people if you can coming. Get us, if you can increase our budget, yeah, we would have a cleaning crew in there all the time. I, and I don't I think don't, I don't increasing really wanna, the budget is an excuse to not clean. But we, we, we get funding from the city and we get funding from D, DYCD. And there are certain things that we can do and there are certain things that we can't do. It is, like I said, it is not our property. Have you I been had, there, Hazel? Yes, I've been in there many times. Okay. And the thing is with, with NYCHA, we, like I said at the last meeting, I don't, our agency doesn't get funded to go into, unfortunately, we do not get funded to go into NYCHA facilities. The city will not fund us. I do it on a, on a day by day, on, a, on an individual basis. If somebody from NYCHA comes to me with issues, I will take care of them. Believe me, I do not turn anybody away, but I don't get funding. I cannot go into, into East Chester Gardens and organize those tenants. That's against the rules. I don't get funding for that. We get funding from the city and we have rules and regulations that we have to follow. We don't own that facility. That's a NYCHA facility. If we wanna go after anybody, we need to go after NYCHA to let them do what they have to do. We were told to leave because the renovations were gonna start, not because we wanted to, we wanted to just leave. With the renovations were supposed to start, the money was taken away from us, from, from the, so the I just want to say, I, I don't think this is, this should be Hazel's um, fight. Yeah. <laughs> I think so, we, need to, we need to really rally all together and, and I'm calling out our legislators. Thank you. That's Nia. who I'm calling out right now. So the legislators that operate and work in that area or over that area needs to step in. Um, Thank we you. have Alina from the mayor's office here.
Um, I just wanted to just speak because obviously in my office, we do have the citywide NYCHA liaison. So any complaint that you had, I wasn't, I didn't hear anything about the renovations of the center. I did speak regarding, I connected Ramsey um, and the gentleman with um, Tony Hubert, who is our citywide NYCHA liaison. And so all of its complaints, I would just say, if you guys see, see me on the emails, if I, that's why I always offer and share my information. If I know about it, I am the face. I, I represent the mayor and I'm here and I always share my information. You guys are sending an email about this. If you, if you see, see me on an email, I will make sure that it gets to the agency to address the issue. All right. Thank you, Alina. So now we, Jeanette, one last, Jeanette's last comment. Go ahead. Okay, so my last comment is that I do think politicians should step up more and be more equitable in all sections of the Bronx um, because it's disproportionate sometimes how the Bronx is serviced and recognized. The second thing that I'm going to say is I do know how NYCHA works. And as someone who has had to be creative and think outside the box and do a lot of grassroots things, I'd be happy to see if maybe I could talk to someone at that community center and even think of a fundraiser to coordinate, to get some funds to do something more immediate, especially in terms of the cleanliness, because if those children are there and a deep cleaning is needed, we could set a target and maybe do something to get the funds for them. And if we can't do it as a community board, then I can do it as um, a community member. <laughs> Thank you, okay. Jeanette. Thank you. Thank you very All right, so next on the agenda, final item is new business. Do we have any new business? Go ahead, Joe. Thank you. Well, it's cute. Are we doing anything uh, board-wise uh, for the 4th of July? Not to my knowledge. Is anybody doing anything community-wise? <laughs> okay, so that's about it. No, nobody doing anything locally. Not to my knowledge. No. Okay, right. just wanted to know. All right, is there anything else? Jeremy? Inviting us over. I'll bring the beer. Jeremy? He's still counting. Okay, he's still just counting. Checking. We're still counting. Is there any more new business? All right. So should we adjourn the meeting and then let Jeremy? Can't adjourn. We can't. Adjourn. Very well. Okay, here we go. Hold on. Got to get a screen. All right. Okay. So, uh, uh, Richard Reynoso won, but had 20 votes. Ed got eight. Uh, so, uh, Rich is the winner. Um, congratulations, Rich. Uh, and Debbie got 13. Harry got 16. So, Harry's the winner. Congratulations, Harry. And just to be clear, there are only 30 votes the second time around. So that lowers the, the threshold. Um, well, yeah, I mean, because I people left, right? I don't know who exactly left, but I'm assuming whoever didn't vote left. I mean, OK? Rich? Uh, so 30 out of 30 votes. <laughs> Motion to adjourn.
Meeting ended at 9.48 p.m. Thank you. I'm sorry, we're expecting that. Okay.